Hello. Hello and good morning. Welcome to the Culinary View here in the Vineyard District. A lovely, lovely morning here at Messina Hof and we're going to share with you some wonderful tips. Well, this this month's ingredient is unusual. It's the mesquite bean. So I know everybody's seen the mesquite trees. They're everywhere. They grow like weeds and normally it's a nuisance plant that we try to remove. But in fact, it's an amazing indigenous plant that produces seed pods that can be made into flour. And the Native Americans used it frequently. It's a, it's a drought hardy plant, so it can grow uh, in anywhere, anytime. And the roots go very, very deep, breaking up the soil, actually making it a little more fertile for the other plants that are around it. So one of the uh, ingredients we're gonna talk about is the mesquite powder or mesquite flour and the Native Americans actually took the beans and ground them up and you can see it's a really fine powder and when I first opened it and smelled it it was almost like coconut cocoa and cinnamon really delicate uh, character and the taste comes through a little bit it's not sweet though it smells sweet it is um, kind of spicy has a little bit of acid to it but it is very uh, smooth and kind of gives a, almost a floral character. You use it in breads. I tried it with several different things and um, I think the best thing is to use it as a, an added ingredient in bread. So you would not use your all purpose flour as well, but then add this mesquite flour into it for that added flavor and texture into your breads. And, and where do you find that uh, flour? I actually found this online. You can order it. I don't know if it's available in the stores. I'd certainly look for it. And it's fun just to play with. Get some, and it's nutritious. It's got a lot of fiber, a lot of vitamins, nutrients. So I think it's a worthy candidate for your, for your pantry. You know, it's fun. And the big word now in our business is indigenous. <laughs> you know, is. we're trying to be as, as close to uh, nature as possible. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying uh, things that are readily available locally. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you take a mesquite, I can't imagine, we've got 50 acres of mesquite uh, up, up the hill uh, and uh, and and it uh, it flourishes. Uh, we may it, be harvesting seed pods. In the uh, absolutely, <laughs> uh, and you know th there's a distinction between the mesquite and the we satch. We satch mm -hmm. the uh, the mesquite has the pods, right? Right. That's and the right. we satch. I don't think it has pods. It doesn't no. have it. Uh, you know, so that's one way to differentiate the difference between the uh, mesquite and the we shat we satch. <laughs> And the wines that we selected to go with this is, are, are all wines that are light, crisp, and have some acidity to them. Of course, great for summertime. Because of this hint of acidity that's in the flower itself, these wines we feel like would actually complement the breads that you make with it. And the uh, three wines are all 22 vintages. Uh, you know, when you uh, select wines that you're looking for freshness, uh, you want to stick to the most current vintage that you can. Obviously, uh, 22 was the last vintage, uh, and so these are all 22s. The first wine is the Dry Riesling. You know, Dry Riesling, to me, is a, uh, a kind of a minimally discovered wine. I think a lot of uh, people don't realize that uh, Riesling can be in a dry form. And when it is, uh, I think it's it's got such lovely acidity and that uh, kind of crisp granny apple aroma. You know, it's it's really, really nice. And it's got a beautiful color. It's got a straw yellow uh, color to it. It's made in stainless steel. There is no oak aging. There's no malolactic. Uh, it is a straightforward uh, fermentation. Uh, normally, the yeast that we use here at Messina Hof are German yeast that are indigenous to the uh, Rhine region and also the Mosul region of Germany. And, you know, people ask me, you know, uh, is that a natural yeast? Well, these yeasts that are uh, that we use are basically cultured. So what happens is you take a grape cluster and then you scrape the yeast off of the skin of the grape. 
and then you propagate it. You, you produce more and more of it. And that's how you, we get all of these wonderful yeasts. You know, people will say, uh, and uh, oh, I used wild yeast. Well, you know, wild yeast is like telling a truck, uh, I want you to go someplace, but I'm not going to tell you where you're going to go. And that's not good. As a winemaker, I want to know an endpoint. And so these start as perfectly natural yeasts in the region where the variety is known and they are cultured. So these have predictable outcomes. And that is so critical in winemaking because, you know, when you go into uh, the winemaking process, there are 2,500 decisions that a winemaker has to make. So you don't want to have one of the most important decisions, which is what is the yeast going to produce? You don't want that to be potluck. Uh, you just don't want that. So I've never understood a winemaker getting up in front of people and saying, I use wild yeast. Oh, well, I mean, that, that's like, you know, making random selection. It, it makes no sense. So these yeasts that we use in the dry Riesling, as a matter of fact, in all these wines, uh, are specifically cultured for the endpoint purpose, and that is what we use here at Messina Hop. So the other fun thing about all three of these wines is that all three are a hundred percent of the variety that we're talking about today. So this is a a hundred percent Riesling. Yes, and a hundred percent from the great state of Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, we grow this Riesling way up on the high plains, about thirty eight hundred uh, feet of elevation. Uh, where we do get a 30 degree differential between daytime high and evening low. Uh, it is a dry desert. You typically, uh, you wind up with 14 to 16 inches of rainfall occasionally, like we've had locally. Uh, re recently, we've had some uh, uh, larger rains, but this is a good time of the year to have those rains because what that does is it builds a canopy so that the leaves are uh, the 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 leaves protect the cluster, and so they'll ripen more slowly, which is better for the quality of the fruit. So we're looking forward to a great 2023. So that's the first wine. The second wine is a lovely, lovely rosé, and probably one of the most um, popular grapes to make rosé is Grenache. Mm. And it has this beautiful label. It's one of our art series labels. And this is the 2022 uh, Grenache Rosé. It, it's a beautiful, beautiful wine. And Grenache has the aroma profile of, um, oh, I think roses. I, I, I always think of rose petals. And uh, some st like a, strawberries or maybe uh, dipped in white chocolate. That characteristic, I like that too. Yeah, and yeah. and the and the aroma of the Grenache and the flower, it mm -hmm. was really a beautiful complement to each other. Yeah. So and and this is on the dry st side, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a dry rosé. Then the third one uh, is a very special one. It's called Orange Muscat, and it is a Mistella. So let's describe what Mistella means. The Mistella process is where you take the grapes and they're extremely aromatic. When you're harvesting orange muscat, it smells like you're in orange blossoms. Mm -hmm. Beautiful aroma. And it, it is in the uh, muscat family, so it's, it's an orange version, you know, because the typical muscat canelli is more peach, and this is much more orange. orange it definitely uh, carries off the orange component. And then uh, after it's fermenting for a few days, we add spirits. So we add actually some brandy into the process, which arrests the fermentation. So it stops the fermentation. So it's actually kind of like a white port. It's, it's very similar to a white port, uh, but we're using orange muscat uh, grapes to do so. So, And again, it has that acidity uh, of citrus an orange citrus in this case. Which complements the flower. the flower. It really yes. does. Mm -hmm. And this is a sweet dessert wine. So it's wonderful. Pour it over vanilla ice cream. Mm -hmm. uh, un uh, truly unbelievable. Uh, yesterday I was uh, cooking some fish and I used the orange muscat 
uh, with butter. So I had the, what, beurre blanc? Beurre blanc. It was beautiful. It's, it's, it's a really beurre blanc good. sauce because you're using butter and the white wine. And it and it just made such a lovely, lovely uh, uh, aroma on the uh, red snapper that we were, I was cooking yesterday. So these are three fantastic wines that go very nice with an indigenous uh, flower that is... Uh, pretty ancient because the uh, the Indians realized may as well use the beans uh, they're on the tree they're right there and if we have more drought we may all be harvesting mesquite beans absolutely. out of our backyard absolutely and you can find other recipes for the mesquite flower on our vineyard district site so we'll put that link in with the video and then you can experiment for yourselves very good so God bless everybody and uh, drink Texas wine. Enjoy Messina Hoff. Enjoy your life. It's the good life. It's the life mm -hmm. that you have and the love that you share. So <laughs> God bless you all.